It's been a long road since the original kicker christened that first pickup truck. It kicked off a car audio renaissance, and upgrading your music in a vehicle was a requirement. America's Music Machine became live and loud over your passion, your emotion, your existence. Outdoors or on the open road, your sound is kicker. Hey guys, Cruz Pedregon here, coming to you from our race shop in Brownsburg, Indiana. I want to say thank you for checking out the Kicker Unmasked show. From speakers to their headphones, I've always been a huge fan of Kicker Audio because they like to live loud, just like our Nitro Funny Car. I'm very proud to be part of the family. It's the Kip and Dave Show. Hmm, no excitement. Are you ready? <laughs> 22. Me, me, me. We're doing it one more time. We're going to do another one. We're going to do this right this yeah. time. Weeka, weeka, weeka. Yeah. Check. I'm speedless. Speedless. Camera adds 27 pounds. Okay. It just seems like a, a, a I know, rough it's, tra it's, it's just it's kind of, yeah. This is Dave. And Kip. Come check us out. out. This is Kip. And Dave. And I got it wrong again. And we're going to have to do this again because we went on a different trail. <laughs> Until then, this is Dave. And Kip. Come check us out. C -c Come check us out. Yeah. Wiki, 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 wiki. I think that's good. <laughs> just pick one. God, I hate the ending. There's no way to yeah. end this. Just say, come see us. Come. Just come see us. And just come see us. So. Come see us at the extra, come see us at two locations. God, I, it just seems so hard. Oh, <laughs> howdy. Delmar Hogwall up here coming to you from outside Mildred's Bait Shop in Lingerie. I want to appreciate you all coming, giving a look-see in on the Kicker Unmasked show. Those folks at Kicker salt to the earth make some of the finest gear ever tickle your ear. So, mighty fine of you to come take some time off and check them out. And remember, whether you're looking for night crawlers or nighties, Mildred's is your place. So once again, thank hey, what? Hey, son, put down that armadillo and get some pants on. Oh, my Lord, kids. Music is my passion, my livelihood, and it's in my DNA. My pals at Kicker Marine Audio gave me a chance to take the music what I love and listen to at home, on stage, and in the car, onto the water. Hi, this is Jason Bonham, and I want to say a big thank you to my friends at Kicker Audio for inspiring the songs and the stories behind the music that inspires America. Go overboard! The Kicker Quad Box 
is the most insane, ground-pounding, basehead-loving, preloaded subwoofer enclosure we have ever offered. It consists of four L7R 12-inch subwoofers. It has a total power handling of 2400 watts RMS, and it's tuned at an amazing 31 hertz. Here to tell us more about it is Kicker's very own Jeremy Brown. Hi, my name is Jeremy Brown. I've been with Kicker for 22 years. I work in the research and development department. In the early 2000s, I would run the Gates Bronco with shows like Daytona. We would do hair tricks, 48 10-inch subwoofers with 48 1,000 watt amplifiers. Really big build back in that day. We were able to develop some high output enclosures that were up above the 170 dB mark. We set a few world records with some of those enclosure designs and our woofers. We learned a lot about high output enclosure designs during that time, and we've been able to bring that to our product lines today. Within the last year, we introduced a new subwoofer enclosure with four L7R12s that we call the Quad Box. Our Quad Box is built out of three quarter inch birch. It's got a one and a half inch baffle and a one and a half inch bottom. We also use window frame bracing along with corner bracing to make the enclosure more rigid. We use a flared port to reduce port noise and increase port surface area. This type of vent design helps maximize output. We use the L7R 12 inch subwoofers because this allows you to use one KXA 2400.1 amplifier and you still get big bass with fewer upgrades to your charging system. The Kicker Quad Box is the bass head starter kit. And if you're worried, it plays way below 40 hertz. Do not attempt to adjust this transmission. We have assumed control. The year is 1980. Music fights for its very survival in an acoustically desolate wasteland man calls automobile. Enter Steve Irby, a man whose love of music helped end this scourge forever and forge a path for modern car audio to follow. A humble musician with a passion for quality sound, Mr. Irby is a man who feels it is his destiny to provide a sanctuary for mobile audio. Welcome. Join us this evening as we venture back to the very night a young Steve Irby gains his inspiration to create the legacy we know today as Kicker Performance Audio. Though he does not realize it now, by this time tomorrow, Mr. Irby will have completed blueprints for the original kicker and champion the war against mobile audio inequality. Tonight, Mr. Irby's prayers will be answered as he begins his quest into the Q Zone. Kicker L7QB8. With roots dating back to Kicker's inception, Mr. Irby and his team of engineers have achieved an unrivaled level of design and functionality. With extraordinary bass and a minimal footprint, the L7QB8 utilizes a seamless quarter inch extruded aluminum housing, allowing optimal internal air volume for the subwoofer. This exclusive design provides exceptional strength and stability. Like the original kicker, the L7QB8 incorporates a unique passive radiator to minimize required airspace while optimizing the efficiency and frequency response of the subwoofer. Opposite the passive radiator, the L7QB8 is equipped with the all-new 8-inch L7 square subwoofer 
The 2016 L7 features an aluminum basket for exceptional strength and thinned aluminum heat sinks for efficient heat dissipation. Kicker's blue lace spider, solo cone 360 degree back bracing, and a laser etched comb brace combine as a single ultra rigid unit. The result is increased clarity, higher volume, and added reliability. The square cone features over 20% more surface area than round subwoofers. It's attached to a Santa Prime surround, then stitched to the cone for long life and durability. This surround features Kicker's patented rib corners, which fully dictates cone motion and extends surround life. At the base of the unit, a pair of custom form flanges integrate seamlessly with an extremely low profile mounting system, consisting simply of a mounting plate and bar. Once installed, the overall height of the enclosure is only nine and a half inches. This profile is small enough to work perfectly in countless trucks, sedans, and SUVs. Once again, Kicker sets a new standard with the groundbreaking design and unparalleled performance of the all new L7 QB8.
Welcome, Kicker Unmasked. It is Tuesday night, 7.30, and I just saw Kip's forehead in the shot. As you can see, Kip's not in the studio tonight. He's taking a night off, well-deserved. So today, you get to talk to Mr. 40 Hertz. That's me, Aaron Malin, Kicker Tech Force, and of course, Ken Bundy. You've seen Ken before. And we're gonna talk about some marine products today. Now, Kicker Marine, we actually started marine products before, I'll say the early 2000s. And when we did Kicker Marine, the very beginning, we, um, let's just say we didn't do such a great job, right, Ken? We went into it like uh, some companies are still into it. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just, we'll just okay, so, uh, but before we dive into that, let's talk about uh, Ken a little bit. And okay. uh, Ken, how'd you get here? What do you do? Uh, well, some of you guys out there, uh, I saw some names that are pretty familiar there on the list. Some of you guys already know me. For those that don't, um, I installed professionally for a little over a decade. And before that, of course, I, I was in it as a hobby. Um, so I was in the, the Navy, United States Navy. I saw we had some, uh, some National Guardsmen and some Air Force on there talking. I heard some, some talk of that before we started. Uh, so go Navy. Uh, during that time, doing side installs like crazy. And then after I got out of the Navy, um, I went to college and I started installing on the side and started doing it professionally. And actually, that's where I met this guy here. <laughs> so I went to a training, a kicker training. He was giving and I said, hey, uh, your job is awesome. You get to travel the world and share your hobby and share your your." Uh, your excitement with everybody. How do I get your job? Oh yeah, and I have to interrupt you now because because this happens a lot. Uh, there's four of us that travel the world teaching uh, Kicker Car Audio, and someone always comes up and says, "Hey man, I want your job. How do I get your job?" I say, "Give me a resume." You know what I get? Crickets in okay. my inbox. So Ken actually sent a real resume, a really good resume. Take it from there. Oh, uh, yeah, so I sent him a resume, and um, you know, this wasn't a thing that was overnight. It, it wasn't like they called me, yes, Ken, we love you here. Um, so it actually took, it was still another three years, maybe a little better in three years. I kept installing, actually moved to Stillwater, Oklahoma, where we are now. We're live tonight from Stillwater, Oklahoma, um, and I was installing here locally. And eventually, about three years later, I got uh, a chance in research and development, um, doing some real world testing, some life cycle testing, getting to, to beat up on our amplifiers and our electronics and things like that. Um, so that was my introduction into Kicker, and now I am a trainer, and I do do what you do. Yes, he so, does, and he it took is a while, but well, and he's being modest because he's a phenomenal well, trainer. Thank you very much. He, he knows his he's stuff. Not too bad himself. <laughs> Aaron's not too bad himself. <laughs> so we're going to talk about some marine stuff, and as indicated, we've been doing marine since the early 2000s, but we didn't really start with high quality R and D deep dive marine. We actually did what Ken said. A lot of our competitors do. We took our car audio stuff and we painted it white. And I'll tell you what, uh, it didn't take long to realize that was not gonna work. So in 2006, we did a complete reboot of our marine line. We brought on a marine specialist, Mr. Phil White. You may have seen him in some of our videos where we talk about marine products. Uh, speaking of which, we have a deep dive marine best practices video on our YouTube and um, Facebook, right? Facebook, yeah, Facebook channels. And it's a fantastic deep dive with Phil White. But let's talk about products. So Ken, if I'm gonna design a marine audio system, where do I start? Well, tonight we're gonna to start with uh, head units, of course. That's where the audio comes from. But before we get into some specific product, I think you might wanna give us a little shout out. As you guys know, every single week, we like to give away product, and this week is gonna be no exception. So make sure you guys stick around. Uh, we are going to be giving away product. We're gonna do a first, second, third place type of thing. You're gonna be able to win some very cool product. Um, so. Anything else to add to that? I just wanted to make sure we reminded everybody about Yes, that. thank you. It's uh, kicker.fun forward slash marine. Kicker.fun forward slash marine, M-A-R-I-N-E. And that is where you want to go to register to win. There are three groups of winners, uh, three prizes. Uh, the third third prize is EB300s. That's uh, earbuds, kicker earbuds, EB300s, base for your face. Gray kicker unmasked t-shirt, that guy right back there, you get one of those t-shirts and then a couple of koozies for your frosted cold beverage. The second place winner, also EB300s, another uh, set of koozies and another t-shirt. And then the first place, this is the, this is the one you wanna hang around for. Speaking of which, you gotta be here for the whole show, right? Yep, uh, the 
the selection goes close at 8.30, I believe. I think they, yes. close, they close up at 8.30, and then we'll announce some winners. And the first place, you get a pair of our lighted LED-lit coaxial marine speakers, 6.5 or 8-inch, whichever fits your application better, and then a limited edition black Kicker on Mass t-shirt. And that's the OG one. That was yes. the original one. Those are very limited edition, so I hope you wear extra small. It's always that way. <laughs> <laughs> a schmedium, right? Or schmedium. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, okay, thanks, Kim, for keeping us on track. Yeah, no problem. So let's start with... We want to make sure that you give Kip Litzy some love. We wish you were here with us tonight, Kip. Um, you know, it's unfortunate, but um, he's handling some personal business, so he got us tonight, and uh, hopefully he'll be back again next Tuesday. But yeah, let's dive into it. So Kicker does have a whole smorgasbord of <laughs> marine equipment. And, um, you know, the overall um, thing that we want to convey is we've learned from our history. Like he said, we started by just taking our car audio stuff, putting it in a white box, or, uh, you know, just painting the chassis white or whatever it might be. And of course, when you take car audio stuff, you put it in a marine environment, whether it's saltwater or freshwater, it doesn't, doesn't handle the times, right? You know, of course, um, it could be cardboard and paper that deteriorates, it could be rust, it could be a lot of different things. So we've learned from our mistakes over a decade ago. Like you said, in 2006, we did a large reboot and we made sure that, you know, we didn't use carbon steel anymore. So if we had to use steel due to strength, we make sure it was high quality stainless steel. So 316L quality stainless steel. Um, and then composite materials, it could be a plastic or it could be a fiberglass reinforced, um, depending on the application or where it is. So we do make high quality marine products, uh, whether it's our amplifiers, whether it's our speakers, or any of the head units that we're going to talk about tonight. Um, so without further ado, let's start at the beginning, right, where the music comes from, and that's going to be our head unit. So uh, it was new for 2020. We came out with uh, a whole new line of head units. That's going to be the KMC 2, 3, 4, and 5. So the KMC 2 through 5. Some of you guys that have been following our marine audio for a little while may recognize the KMC2 name. Um, we did used to have a head unit called the KMC2. It is still very similar. It is a round face. Um, I think, Ernie, we have some, some, uh, some actual photos of the KMC2 maybe you can put on the screen. So the KMC2 is going to be a round face. The KMC3 is going to be identical except for square face. So keep in mind, those. so we got Sorry, four, square face, <laughs> square, square face of it, just, just like the one Aaron's holding. That is actually the KMC5 we'll get to shortly. Um, but you can see square face versus round face. That's the only difference between the KMC2 and the KMC3. So whatever kind of fits the motif in your boat, if you've got you know round gauges, round everything, then use the KMC2. If everything's square and you like the square look, we have a KMC3. And uh, you know operationally, it's exactly the same. Same buttons, you know, software, and it's the same, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so this is not the KMC2 that we had three years ago. It is completely reboot. We just kind of reused the, the name a little bit to that family name, Kicker uh, Marine Controller, you know, so KMC 2 and 3. Um, it does have an onboard amplifier, so KMC 2 and 3. You're going to get uh, 25 watts RMS by 4. So it does have an amplifier built in. And again, that's 25 real world RMS. It's not, you know, peak watts or anything <laughs> like that. So 25 watts, you can actually do a good little chunk of output with. It's a simple installation. Just hook up the speakers right to the head unit and you can power boat with it. Not a problem. But uh, we do have an RCA output on it as well. So if you do want to run to an external amplifier, maybe for a subwoofer or something like that, there is one pair of RCA outputs on the KMC2 and 3. And then also, um, what else do I leave out? It does have aux in, Bluetooth, USB inputs. That's all standard. That's going to be the same for any of our families. So make sure if you, need, if you need Bluetooth in, you need USB in, all of our marine head units have that. Um, you may have noticed the back of that one. So this is a KMC5, but it is a similar size dimension uh, as far as the rear of it is concerned. So you can see that it has a round chassis on the back. All of our head units are going to drop into a three inch circular hole. So a three inch circular hole would be cut into the helm or wherever this is going to be mounted and then our head units would drop in, whether it's a KMC2, 3, 4, or 5. Um, you cut the round hole and it'll drop right in. So that is the KMC2 and the KMC3. Now, KMC4, right? Now you're talking some good stuff. The KMC4 is going to be a higher res screen and full color. That's probably the things that you're going to notice right away. So you're going to notice the biggest difference there instead of having the, uh, you know, what do they call it, the seven segment display with the, you know, almost like an alarm clock. And right. It does the job on the KMC2 and 3. It looks great. However, the KMC4, you're going to get a high res color display with album artwork. Um, and then you're also going to get uh, more power out because the head unit is now two ohm stable. 
38 watts RMS by four at two ohms on the KMC4. So now you can take two marine speakers, like two four ohm speakers, wire them in parallel, mm -hmm. two ohm load. Heck, you got 38 watts out to a pair of speakers times four, that's eight speakers, 38 watts a pair. And that's a decent amount of audio, really. Of course, I'm sure a lot of those guys watching now, they want tons of output. <laughs> Obviously, you can add an amplifier to it, but if you don't want to get deep into it, um, you know, it's still pretty nice. That's quite a bit of power, and that's all built into the head unit. Uh, but you do now get three pair of RCA pre-outs. So now if you want to run full four channel amplifiers, so you can do left, right audio, uh, front and rear, fader, or something like that, you get that opportunity. And as well as a subwoofer, if you wanted to connect a dedicated subwoofer amplifier and have that you know, non-fading pre-out, you have that option on the KMC4. Um, and then another big feature, an upgrade to that KMC4, dual zone capability. So it has a Zone 2 RCA output that you can run to a separate outboard amplifier to power speakers that are maybe your, your wakeboard tower speakers. So maybe you don't want those wakeboard tower speakers blaring as loud as, loud as the interior for, because you're up on the pier. You know, you're tied to the pier. You don't need those you know, blaring at the maximum volume. <laughs> so you can have two separate zones. Maybe you have a sleeper cabin. You're really rich and you've got a sleeper cabin <laughs> in your boat. They do exist. And you've got you know, two or four speakers down in the sleeper cabin and nobody's down there. So I don't, why would I have those playing? So you can have those and control those separately. And actually in the software of the head unit, you can control those, those volume controls between zone one and zone two, either absolute, separately, or relative. So as you turn up the volume knob, it turns them both up, but relative to each other. So they both go up five from whatever they were, for example. So um, there's a lot of flexibility built into it. So as you can see, there's actually quite a bit of upgrades when you step off the KMC two and three up to the KMC four. Um, and then, of course, our flagship model is gonna be the KMC5. That is our top dog, and that's what we do have a sample of here. And of course, I think Ernie's gonna show us uh, some on-screen little higher res screen that you're actually gonna get with the KMC5. It is a larger display, obviously full color. So, larger full color display. And now, like I said, the KMC4 is two ohm stable. Well, so is the KMC5, but now you're gonna get six channels of output. Six channels of output. You'll get 40 watts RMS by six at two ohm, 40 watts by six built into the head unit. So now, I mean, think about it. You could wire up a, a dozen speakers to this thing and actually have some decent output without the need of an external amplifier. So again, built into that chassis, 40 watt, true benched 40 watts RMS by six built into it. Now the cool thing about that amplifier output is it is four channels um, and then you can either run channels five and six just like channels one through four or you can actually treat channels five and six like zone two. Mm. So if you want to have a dual zone setup but you don't want to have external amplifiers, you do get that flexibility with the KMC5. However, we also have zone two RCA output as well. So if you want to treat it like the KMC4 and run an external amplifier for zone two, you can most certainly do that with the KMC5. And now cool little tip, all of the harnesses, the head unit harness that has the main speaker wires and the uh, power connections in it, if you guys will get a, up tight on that, up tight on that. So this is the harness that connects into um, you know, your boat. So it's gonna have your power, speaker leads, et cetera. All of these are interchangeable. So right now, if you purchase the KMC4, for example, and then later uh, you decide you want the KMC5 two years later, no problem. You just unplug it and plug it right back in. Channels five and six are actually on this separate harness here. So you would have this already in the watercraft if you had the KMC3 or 4 or whatever it might be, and then when you choose to upgrade, unplug it, plug it back in. Plug, the, uh, plug this in and your power's done, all, all your four speakers are done, et cetera. Um, so as you can see, USB inputs, um, you know, regular aux input via RCA, obviously FM radio. On the KMC5 though, you're also gonna get satellite radio. Satellite radio input uh, for the KMC5, what else? I know I'm leaving out a ton of stuff. Video. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, so as, Aaron, as you see, Aaron's holding that yellow plug there, the composite video input. So it does have a video input for it. Now, most people, if you're familiar with car audio, are probably thinking backup camera. Well, certainly you could use a backup camera or maybe a, a rear-facing camera to watch a skier or whatever you want. Sure, of course you could do it. Any, anything you wanted into it. But what we've uh, generally found, we've already had dealers saying that they're using it as a camera to um, look at their engine compartment. Again, we're talking large boats, maybe bigger than a little 20 foot boat. <laughs> so if they have a, a separate room that has an engine compartment, they can monitor uh, the video feed from the engine compartment. Or again, big boat, if you're tied up to the pier and you actually have a gangway that, that spans between the pier and the boat, you could have a camera to see who's coming on and off uh, at any time with that. So if you're not, if you can't actually view the gangway from wherever the head unit is mounted, you have that video input there. So 
and that is toggled either with a wire, just like most aftermarket head units are. You can toggle it with a wire, or you can do it right in the head unit software. So if you just wanted to turn on the video feed without having to flip switches or change gears or whatever the heck you're doing, you can certainly do that. All right. Um, oh, I, how could I leave out anything else about the KMC5? It is NMEA bus compatible. Yes. So if you do have the NMEA bus on your boat, maybe you have a heads-up display uh, with steering wheel controls or something crazy like that, it does have an input for that. Um, a lot of people are going to ask, well, what's it compatible with? We open up our uh, head unit to whatever wants to control it. So, <laughs> so if it speaks the language, we like to control it. I, we have had mostly good success with it. Um, so there are some manufacturers out there who really don't comply with the NMEA standard, and if they choose to speak another language, so to speak, we usually get you know some things that may not work right. Most generally, you're always going to get the basic functions, so volume up and down, track forward, track back. Um, but some of the higher end stuff, walking through menus and things like that, most of the time it will work with our with ours. Uh, if they comply with the standard NMEA commands, <laughs> it will work fine with the KMC5. And then lastly, if you guys remember the uh, picture that Ernie showed on there, if you notice that teal colored ring all the way around the outside of it, yes. it does have an RGB lit ring around it too. So it does have an RGB input. Um, so if you have some RGB speakers, whether they're tower speakers or uh, you know the six and a half inch in the in the boat, you can tie it in your head unit to make sure that it's the same color as all your speakers. So you can really get fancy with it. All right, I think that about ties up the KMC5. So there's a quite a bit, quite a bit of features versus the KMC4. First and foremost, six-channel amplifier, six-channel, 40 watts by four. Uh, excuse me, 40 watts by six amplifier built into it. Zone two amplified. So again, zone two compatible without the actual having RCA output to an amp or anything like that. Um, Sirius XM, and then of course the NMEA bus compatibility. Well, not gonna product <laughs> everywhere here. Um, so. I guess that's our lineup on head units. I wonder if anybody's got any questions. Yeah, on let's, let's take some questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do we got? So I'm looking here. So, uh, let's see. No, no, no. I, actually, I, well, I, oh, go I was going to ask you a question, sure, actually, sure. Uh, because I know when, when you and I travel, undoubtedly someone always says, when's Kirk going to make a head unit? Well, When's Kicker going to make a head unit? Yeah, we, we do. We do. We do. We do so make marine head units. The, sure the question is, could you put this in a car or a custom build? Oh, of course you can. Of course you can. So, I mean, there's nothing um, that says you can't do that. It's just up to the marine standard, which surpasses what you would need in a car environment or, um, you know, go-karts or all kinds of crazy stuff we've seen them in. We've, uh, we've had them in coolers, you know, boomboxes, <laughs> yeah. all kinds of crazy stuff. So, obviously, it's up to the marine standard, then it's going to be up to the car audio standard or the uh, power sports standard, that type of thing. So, it's made to get splashed, it's made to get wet, um, you can hose it down, it's made for that. Again, Kicker's product, Kicker's Marine product is the real deal. We've got a question. I think I'm just going to have to just leave that <laughs> just there. Leave, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jim Grant is asking, are any of the output channels bridgeable? So any of the output, amplified output power So we don't, we don't recommend bridging uh, outputs to increase power. I mean, that would be cool, um, but we're not going to recommend bridging uh, the outputs of our head units, whether it's the KMC2 or 3, 4, or 5. You mentioned, uh, and I want to key on this real quick, you mentioned uh, you can spray it off at the end of the day when the boat is a little wet, dirty. So does that have an IP rating? I believe it's IP67. Okay, so basically that means that at the end of the day you can clean off your radio yeah. just like everything else in the boat. You can spray it with a hose, no big deal. That's what it's meant for. If you get caught in the rain, et cetera, et cetera, it's, it's, it's made for that. Um, I did want to mention we actually do also offer some wired remote controls. So if you need to control the head unit, volume up, down, track forward, track back, whatever it might be, we do have two. We do have two different wired remotes that are compatible with our head units. So we have the KRC12. That's going to be a, a um, just simple, basic, you know, have power on, power off, track forward, track back. Um, and that's going to come with 25 foot of wire to connect to any of our head units, the KMC2 through the KMC5. And then we do have a KRC55 that is brand new for 2020. Yeah. And that's going to connect to the KMC. The KMC5 <laughs> only. So the, that's going to give you a high-res screen on a wired remote control, and you get basically all the features that you can do on the head unit you can do from that outboard wired remote control. And again, it's going to come with 25 foot of wire, so if you want to have control of the head unit back at the splash pad at the back of the boat, you can do that. You know, it's not a problem. Um, and then if you, we have Y cables as well, so you can actually have multiple wired remotes throughout your boat, wherever it might be, because you want to turn the volume up or down or whatever it might be. So if you're chilling on the, on the sandbar, um, you know, and you're in the water having a good time, you don't want to have to get into the boat to turn it up or down or change the track. That's where you usually see them, is just outside the boat, so you can still reach it if you're in the water. Yeah, yeah, okay. So question-wise, it looks like we've covered everything thus far. 
Let's move on to... What's uh, next, huh? Coax speakers. Yeah, so we got your radio, you got your source unit, let's talk speakers. For sure. So you're going to need speakers, right? Um, we have an entire lineup of marine speakers. So whether it's, you know, you need little four inch speakers or you need six and a half inch speakers, we even have eight inch full range coax speakers. Um, we do have them both RGB lit and non RGB lit. And the cool thing about all of our, well, all but one skew, I think, of our marine speaker, our marine coaxes, is they come with both color grills in the box. Mm -hmm. So there's not two separate ones. You got to make sure you buy the white pair. You make sure you buy the charcoal colored pair or whatever it might be. Those grills come in the box. And you guys are looking at some lifestyle images there. Um, so yeah, that grill is, is in the box, the charcoal colored. Or if you have a white color scheme going on your boat, that grill will be in the box too. So um, RGB lit, and these are the real deal speakers. So once you actually mount these into the boat, um, you don't have to worry about spraying them with a hose or anything like that. So if, uh, Ernie, I don't know if I gave you a shot of the rear of the coax speakers, if you could put that up for us. So you'll see that these are just a little bit different. And yeah, I'm kind of being facetious there. A, lot a lot different. Lot different. <laughs> They're a lot of bit different. Oh, I guess he says we don't have that picture. Anyway, so we're going to have uh, watertight connections on the back for both the speaker wires as well as the RGB input. And then if you'll note the lifestyle images that he had up there, if you look real, real closely, that tweeter is not actually coaxially mounted. Well, it is, but it's not on a host in the yeah. center like you would see a traditional coax speaker. So that allows us to have that waterproofing ability. You don't have to worry about water getting down into the motor of the speaker. That tweeter is actually mounted on that grill, huh? So there you go. Yeah, you can see how the tweeter isn't actually mounted on a post in the center like a, a normal car audio coax speaker would be. Um, so it's in the grill, and that's where the RGB wires actually run through one of those little fingers of the grill. And then the connections in the back, as I said, are watertight. You don't have the um, you know the cardboard terminals with push-on speaker fittings like you would in the car audio environment. So Another uh, great feature to talk about with our marine coax speakers is the ignition protection on the terminals. Why would ignition protection be important? Well, of course. So um, if you have a boat, obviously you usually have engine underneath a storage compartment or whatever. Um, you usually do get some exhaust fumes that accumulate at least in that one compartment, and oftentimes it spreads through the storage compartments on the side of the boat uh, where you store your life jackets or you know whatever gear you might have with you. And generally, um, if that were to have, if you were to have some <laughs> sort of spark in that area, you might have a fire on your hand. So we make sure that all of our stuff is ignition protected, and we'll get into some of our accessories that we've actually recently revised uh, on that note because we have some really top tier stuff when it comes to that. I was doing a training a few years ago on our marine stuff, and someone brought the, the, the grill to me, the speaker grill, and he said, Aaron, there's a little notch in the bottom. What, what's that little notch for in the grill? And I looked at it, and I thought, I think I'd better ask Phil what that notch is for. So what's that notch for? So there is a notch at, the, at well, several places on our grill, and it's actually just so water can egress away from the speaker cone. So most of your speakers, of course, they're going to be mounted vertically, right? So kind of standing up and up and down. So if water to were spray it or you spray it with a hose, it catches in the rain or whatever, it doesn't collect at the bottom of the speaker. And it may seem so heady <laughs> and small or whatever. It works. It's a big it deal. Yeah, it actually yeah. works. And so yeah. water can egress and run out of the way, and uh, you know it's no longer sitting on the surround or the cone or whatever, um, and it doesn't. You know, yeah. Damage a speaker over time, which, you know, if it's sat there for a month and a half while your boat's in, in dry, dry dock or whatever it might be, that could be an issue. But we, it's small things that we've just learned by, over the years of, of designing our product. Yes, that's right. The little things. Uh, Bill, do we got any questions we want to pop up on the screen? I see there's a lot of chatter. <laughs> Solo X 2000.1. Uh, so different discussion, different day. Yeah. Uh, Solo X is coming, but uh, not for the marine environment, not today. Yeah, the L7X uh, 2000 watt. Point one, so I assume they were talking about an amplifier. <laughs> uh, so, so here, here's a real discussion. Here's a real question. Uh, Mike Nelson, I uh, bought a KMC5 head unit and six eight-inch kicker marine speakers. What amp should I go with? Great question. So I, obviously you're going to want, um, I, well, just the eight inch. Are those full range speakers? We're going to assume those are full range speakers, uh, not eight inch subwoofers maybe. Let, let's, let's assume that so unless he changes his answer. I, I generally recommend a five channel for something like that. So the KXMA, uh, the new, new model is the 900.5. The KXMA 900.5, power all that stuff, no problem. Nice. 
Now, another thing to consider if you've got eight speakers, of course, we can't see your boat here, but depending on how many zones you have, let's say that you've got a boat and you want to have a splash pad and you want to have maybe a, at the front of the boat, the bow, you've, you've got a little wine and cheese party going on. The more fancy zone, <laughs> well, hey, my mom's fancy. So I the more. I've never seen anybody wine and cheese on the boat. It's, yeah, it's generally quite the opposite. You've met my mom. Different Come budget, on. Different tax bracket, I guess. I don't know. I don't get it. So anyway, the point being that the more channels of control you have in your amplifier, like an eight channel amp, the more you can control each individual set of speakers for ultimate volume. Sure. So you want to have it loud where the kids are swimming and you want to have a little softer where my mom's drinking wine and eating cheese. Okay. With an eight channel amp, that's another opportunity to really control the balance of sure, the boat. Sure, if you had a whole boatload of speakers, no pun intended, you had <laughs> eight, 12 speakers or something yeah. like that, exactly. As he said, you could have different gain settings for all of those, and you could control the volume. Of course, you could do dual zone audio. We talked to KMC4 yes. and KMC5, have dual zone control. Um, so if you wanted to actually full control over it, that would be ideal. So let's move on. We talked about speakers. Let's talk about tower cans. Tower cans, if you're not from the boating world, tower cans are generally large, high output, long throw speakers so that you can hear the water, or excuse me, the water, you can hear the music over the water at the end of a 40 foot tow rope or on a sandbar or the pier. Knots or whatever you're doing. That's exactly. right. So um, generally they're gonna hang from a wakeboard tower. So those of you that have a wakeboard tower, um, we have a lot of different options for that. So namely you guys are currently looking at the uh, KMC, or excuse me, the KMTC 9 and 11 inch cans. Um, so those are going to be a compression horn driver. It has a 1.4 inch speaker in the throat of that, uh, what do they call it, an exponentially increasing horn. <laughs> yes. It's a, a very specific <laughs> horn that we've designed to eliminate the horn sound that you typically get when you have a big horn like that. Or sound very, very natural, just like I am talking now. So we went out of our way to make sure that these are obviously very loud, because that's their job, but they sound great. And I know I'm biased. I work for Kicker. I've heard a lot of cans, and these are <laughs> the best sounding cans out there. And of course, they can get very, very loud, even at great distances. So if you are 30 foot of rope back there and you're, you're water skiing, you're wakeboarding, whatever you might be, doesn't sound like you're 30 foot back there. Um, so those are awesome products. Again, those are 9 inch and 11 inch and they come in both black and white. They're sold by the pair. Um, and we do have, what you're actually looking at is a flat mount version of it. So um, we have some that mount on the, the wakeboard tower bar. They're meant for actual circular bar. But if you have a flat um, uh, bar, maybe more like a bat wing instead of an actual bar. Yeah. Um, you can mount those to that, some sort of flat surface. Um, that is a bar, or excuse me, it has the puck that you're looking at and that hole in the center is actually where all the wiring goes in. So we, it's some pigtails are included with it. So you're gonna get some uh, RGB and speaker wires that'll go right to the center of it, plug into the pigtail, uh, good to go. Uh, the ones that are not flat mount, they, the biggest thing I like to brag about them is A, we designed an entire bracket here in uh, Stillwater, Oklahoma. It is made out of all 316L stainless steel. So it is not only stainless steel, but it is the highest quality. It's a very high quality stainless steel. Some of you guys probably know that maybe you've bought in some products that claim to be stainless and then like <laughs> eight months, a year later, they're rusting. It's a shower curtain. Shower rod. curtain. <laughs> a shower curtain rod and it's in a wet environment. It said it was stainless steel. Then yeah. why is a year later I'm looking up there and there's rust on it? because it was cheap, right? It's low quality and that's just how things break. Well, we didn't, we, didn't, uh, we didn't cheap out, we'll just say. So it's a very large 316L stainless steel bracket um, and it can actually swivel. You pop the little releases loose with your thumb. You can see, oh there, he's got a picture of it. So that thumb release you can see there, you can pop that release uh, with no tools and then you can swivel it. I believe it's uh, about 350 degrees, it will point in just about in any direction. So if you're partying uh, on the dock and you want to point the speakers towards the dock, you can do that. And then later you want to point it to the back because you're water skiing or whatever it might be, you can do that without bringing out the tools. You don't have to you know, loosen some screws with an Allen wrench and then rotate the speakers. I mean, I could rotate an entire rack of speakers in about 90 seconds, you know, it's good to go. Very, very easy. And then you can see that bar, it actually, or excuse me, that bracket adjusts to multiple diameters of tubing without the need of adapters. So you don't have to buy an adapter pack because you got the one and a half inch bar mm -hmm. and you know these, these fit the two inch bar. Um, those will fit uh, one and a half inch to three and a quarter tubing, circular tubing. Uh, those brackets will fit without the need of adapters or anything like that. So very, very cool. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention about it is on the front of that bracket, you might have seen two thumb screws. There are two nuts, kind of thumb nuts that would, uh, you could unscrew again with no tools. The 
entire speaker then undocks from the bracket. So you don't need actually any tools to remove the speaker from the bracket itself. Mm -hmm. So maybe you've pulled up to the dock, you're going to leave your boat there, um, and you don't really trust leaving the speakers out there all night. So there you go. You can see at least one of them there in the picture there on the bottom left. So you'd undo those with your fingers, and then the entire speaker undocks from the bracket, and all your wiring is in that as well. That is a watertight connection in the front of it. So all your RGB connections, your speaker wire, etc., is all in that. You don't have to worry about disconnecting wiring or anything. So you just pop the, the speaker loose lock it up in your cabin or your truck or wherever you're going to keep it secure overnight. You come back in the morning, snap it back in the dock, two thumb screws in, you're back in business. So again, very, very quick. I will knock down every this whole world of product. I'll just watch. I'm going to back up. Yeah, got a, got a lot of product here tonight. So one of the things that I like to talk about in these horns during a training is the exponential horn that you mentioned earlier. This is uh, critical to the sound quality as well as the great distance that you can hear these speakers. And uh, the way that it's been explained is that because it's a continuously increasing radius, there's no standing waves inside the horn. So as Ken pointed out, when you cup your hands and talk, it sounds nasty, but it sounds loud. And a lot of horns sound nasty, but they play loud. These horns, you could actually crank the volume down, aim them inside the boat, and still enjoy them because the sound quality at low and high volume is still there. So it's a huge advantage with these versus some of the competitive products. They play loud products. too, though. Don't sell them short. We make some, some amplifiers that can actually put a lot of power to those and uh, they'll handle it. They're rated at 300 RMS per can. So they're sold as a pair, 600 watts for the pair. Let's talk about that amp real quick, since yeah. we're on the topic. Yeah. What amp would we use with these? Generally, you're going to want to use our KXMA 1200.2 amplifiers. That's 1200 watts RMS, full range power, two channels. <laughs> made, basically, we made that for those cans. And it'll run four of them. Oh, yeah. So if you had two pair, two 11-inch cans or whatever hanging from your wakeboard tower, one KX MA 1200.2 would, would suit them nicely. Bill, we got any questions on the marine cans? We spend quite a bit of time on cans sure. because we love nice cans. Yeah, there you go. He said it, not me. <laughs> what? So, before we leave the can topic, I do want to remind everybody, we don't just have the 9-inch and 11-inch. We do make um, some non-horn loaded speakers in a smaller size. So we do have some cans that are 6.5-inch, 8-inch as well, um, as well as a dual 6.5-inch yes. can. So one one um, enclosure that houses two 6.5-inch speakers. So And those will come with both the bracket, I believe the uh, thumb screw type setup. When you saw the bracket rotate, that was actually an 8-inch can bracket. Um, and again, that'll adjust to different tubing diameters just like the 9-inch or 11-inch will. And then also we have some flat mounts for those as well. Um, flat mount cans, again, those are preloaded, watertight. You can mount those flat uh, with like no angle, so zero degrees actual tilt. And then they come with a couple of shims if you want to actually angle them. So a five degree shim to kind of angle your, the speaker wherever you need and aim it. Five degree and a 10 degree as well. Right. And you know, I almost forgot to bring this up, but we actually have a uh, do it yourself horn loaded compression and separate mid-range driver we too. Do. We've had that uh, we've had that a minute. So and it, like he was saying it's almost the component set yes. of the marine world. So it is a separate horn, a separate full range uh, you know speaker that you would then load into uh, generally you want to load them in an enclosure. I suppose you could mount them in the side of the boat, but generally you're going to see them in some unloaded enclosures which we also do offer. Right. So we do offer unloaded cans very similar to what you see here. So my gosh, if you have somebody <laughs> else's speakers, somebody else's marine speakers that you're in love with, I get it. Um, you know, I'm not going to try and convince you. If, you. if you love how they sound, that's great. And you just need some cans, we do offer some unloaded cans if you want to pop somebody else's speakers in there. Or maybe some great kicker speakers you had, uh, RS speakers, or something crazy way back, <laughs> jump in the way back machine. We've got a great question up here on the yeah. screen. Can I mount those lovely cans on my one and three quarter inch race car roll cage? Oh yeah. Heck yeah you can. So this isn't, we're talking marine in general, um, but these are power sports. It could be, it could be a, you know, a Razor or anything, anything. If it's an off-road vehicle, all day. And we see, and actually I think we have a pair of those on that Kawasaki that you guys, those of you that tuned into the SEMA Unmasked we had um, November, early November, probably saw that Kawasaki side by side with those marine cans on it. Um, so it's it's un, extremely common and heck yeah it'll work. Yeah, <laughs> and you'll hear them over the motor. Yeah, for sure. Are the tower pods only horns or is there a subwoofer option? So those are going to be all full range. We do not have a subwoofer in a pod uh, type setup just yet. TB 8s or 10s, maybe that's a good option. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, we'll talk about marine subwoofers here shortly, but we do have a very similar option to that. I, I guess it is an appropriate time to bring it up. It is a tube subwoofer that's made out of, oops. 
composite <laughs> material, so it is set up for the marine or power sports environment. It is the TB8 and the TB10. So check those out, kicker.com. Another great question, uh, Todd Wolf, is the marine line recommended for the Polaris RZR, or is there another line for that? So we do have a power sports line, an actual power sports line. However, the marine stuff can go in there as well. Generally, they can be used interchangeably for the most part. Um, so they're all uh, built all weather. Both lines are built to be rained on, et cetera. Ah, there we oh, go. Oh. There's a, the TB8 that we're TB8. seeing there. So this is the TB8 subwoofer. You're gonna get one eight inch, uh, in this case, an eight inch Comp RT subwoofer, and then a matching eight inch base reflex driver on the other side. So if Aaron shows you both sides, you can see they look very, very similar. One's actually an active driver, and the other one is gonna be a base reflex, sometimes called a passive radiator design. And you can mount it vertically, as we have here, or it does come with a plate if you wanted to lay it down on its side, it comes with that option as well. I like the vertical mount because it takes up less real estate or floor space, a yes. smaller footprint, if you will. And generally, that means you can fit in more. So instead of maybe just <laughs> one 10, you can fit in two 10s because you stood them up vertically. So there, there is some flexibility in, the, in how you can mount them. And they come in two ohm and four ohm versions. Right, so if so. you need to pair it up to whatever amplifier you have, we have the, that mix. Correct. So this is a great option for the gentleman who asked about uh, cans. Power sports. Power sport yeah, cans. Or, oh, that's right, subwoofer cans. Subwoofer is preloaded. Uh, another gentleman's asking, uh, Mike, how big do the brackets adjust to? It's going to be three and a quarter. Three and a quarter inch tubing diameter. So some awfully big tubing. Um, it will adjust all the way out to that without the need of adapters or anything like that. So maybe a muffler on a diesel pickup. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> hey, we're in Oklahoma, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, uh, wait, wait, we have another question. Okay. How do the enclosed TB subs do in salt water? Great question. I mean, they're made for that environment, pure and simple. I mean, they were designed from that, from the ground up. Um, so we have a, a something we like to say at Kicker, and that is purpose design, purpose built. I know some other manufacturers probably use that too, and there's a lot of truth <laughs> into it. You know, we went out and designed this for this. All of our stuff that you see here was designed in Stillwater, Oklahoma by us. Um, so we wanted to make sure that it, whether it's saltwater, freshwater, whatever it might be, it'll stand up to it. So it may be stainless steel um, hardware that you see on it, um, or it could be the, the way it's colored. So we actually usually UV treat all our stuff, so it has a UV pr uh, protected coating on it, so the black stays a deep, dark, rich black, and then that white obviously stays a vibrant white for many years to come. You don't get that smoker's color. <laughs> you know, off yellow kind of color that a lot of white stuff uh, tends to get after it's been in the sun and exposed to UV over time. So all of our stuff goes through the, the gamut of tests too. So whether it's UV exposure, uh, salt spray exposure, we test the, the living daylight out of our stuff. John is backing us up. He's saying he's run a TB10 in salt water for more than a year with no issues. Thank so you, John. thank you. Yeah, thanks for that backing us up. So it looks like no more questions on that. So let's move on Push to... Push forward to some subwoofers. So, oh, no, wait, I skipped what? over something. We talked about, obviously, all these great cans. Oh. Um, we do have, we, we didn't talk about, I didn't really actually specify, all of those cans, they come RGB lit. So they all are pre-lit with RGB control. So they'll have those RGB inputs um, in that. And again, we're not just talking a few colors. You can have uh, 19 different colored combinations with the KMLC lighting controller. So the KMLC is a separate accessory um, that you can choose to purchase. And then obviously you can light up all your speakers, different colors to have a whole lighting scheme in your boat. Maybe you just want to match the uh, factory color gauges that are there or whatever it might be. Maybe you are obsessed with uh, <laughs> you know, Alabama football and it's got to be crimson <laughs> red or whatever it might be. Hey, you can, what, we're in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Hey, all right, so in here it's going to be the cowboy, so it's going to be bright bright orange um, so if you wanted to have that orange color scheme and you wanted to have that throughout your boat um, you do have that and again the KMLC so that's going to be the kicker marine lighting controller um, and that is going to allow up to 20 20 different colors 19 different modes that you can then scroll through those colors Oop. so we're talking uh, if you want them just rotate through all the colors or maybe you want it to flash flash or chase, breathe or yeah. chase or whatever you want to do there's a lot of different modes that you can do and it'll control up to 12 RGB inputs so you can have 12 grills connected to it 12 speaker whatever it might be um, you have that option with the KMLC. And the, good, the good thing I wanted to point out about that is it does come with a wireless remote control, and that remote control is actually RF controlled. So it uses radio frequency to communicate uh, what color you're, you know, what button you're pressing to change it to what color. So there is no worries about making sure you point the remote in line of sight or anything like that. If you're anywhere in that boat or <laughs> actually even outside the boat, anywhere close to that thing, that receiver is going to pick up that RF signal. Um, you don't have to worry about 
you know, doing this with the remote <laughs> control. Hey, since we're talking about RGB, mm -hmm. let's jump ahead a little real quick and let's talk about the six wire conductor Six sure. conductor wire that you've got here, because uh, I'm sure a lot of guys are wondering, how are you going to wire up our LEDs and speakers? Sure, sure. And so new for Kicker, we do have RGB wire that we now sell by the spool. So it is six conductor wire. I don't know if Tim can get in there real tight on it. So you're going to get um, two, I believe it's 16 gauge speaker wire inputs. Back me up on that, Aaron. Yeah, 16 and 18 gauge. Yeah, and then your RGB connections over here are going to be 18 gauge. So you get two 16 gauge speaker wire, and then four your RGB. Uh, 18 gauge or RGB inputs, as you can see, but it's all in one in piece of insulation, one sheathing, so to speak. So it's very, very easy to run, and especially, especially, this comes in handy for these tower cans when you're actually having to run it through the tubing or something <laughs> like that. A heck of a lot easier to run one. It's roughly, I know you guys are probably looking at my hands, it's about four gauge size, more or less. It's pretty close to four gauge exterior diameter. It's going to be a heck of a lot easier to run this one piece all the way up, shoving it through those round tubes. Um, than it is going to be you know, running all these wires separately. But even if you're just doing RGB coaxes in the side of your boats, again, it's still a heck of a lot easier. And obviously it looks much, much cleaner um, to have this multi-conductor wire. Uh, and we do sell it by the spool, 150 foot to the spool. Some of the gearheads out there are saying, Ken, why do you need 18 gauge wire for LEDs? And <laughs> let's talk about Coast Guard. What's the Coast Guard got to do with this wire? Yeah, so um, we haven't really, we've talked about how all of marine gear is the real deal, right? Yes. So we are, um, you know, compliant with the ABYC and all of those Coast Guard regulations. So if you, um, you, you don't necessarily, it's, it's hard to compare our products to some of our competitors that, that are out there because we are the real deal. So we have a lot of OEM boat manufacturers that choose to use kicker gear in that boat before that boat even hits the water. And that's because you're compliant with all those organizations and they can do it legally, so to speak. So um, our stuff is the real deal and, and that could be the same idea. So to, re, uh, to get back to your original question, yeah. why use 18 gauge? Because they demand it. Yeah, because yeah. That's, that's the minimum standard that they're willing to accept on it. So we jumped ahead. Let's go back to subwoofers. Let's talk bass. Sure, sure. 40 hertz, 40 hertz. What is it? For those that don't know what he's talking about, Mr. 40 Hertz, I'm sure plenty of you guys do know him. If you don't recognize him, he is that you do now, huh? Mr. 40 Hertz here. So yes, obviously we do have a line of Kicker Marine subwoofers. They're going to be the KM10 and the KM12. And we do have two versions of that, so to speak. We actually have an F version, so KMF10 and KMF12. And now the differences between those is one is a standard subwoofer that you would put in an enclosure, just like any subwoofer you might think of. The KMF stands for free air. And we do see those installations very, very common in a boat. So a lot of folks, you don't have a factory uh, in, you know, space for a subwoofer. Maybe you don't want to build an enclosure, a sealed enclosure. It's too much trouble, whatever it might be. We do see an extremely common installation is to take one of those storage compartments that you might throw your life jackets, you cut a hole in it, you screw a subwoofer in, done. So hey, I get it. Um, you know, I think we had a percent. Is it something like forty percent? Forty percent. Yeah, the installations that we see do it a setup like that. That's not really a sealed enclosure. And you think, well, I put the seats on top of it, and it's all like one big sealed enclosure. <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, it shares. It's not airtight, and it shares the entire side of the boat in terms of airspace. Generally, that'd be more of a free air uh, installation. So we do have a subwoofer that's very, very specific for that type of installation. So if you're going to do, uh, if you're not going to build an actual sealed enclosure behind the subwoofer, use the KMF line of subwoofers that's built for that. Again, 10 inch and 12 inch, um, and they are uh, two ohm and four ohm versions as well. Two ohm and four ohm single voice coil. So buy whichever version you need for your particular application. Uh, we do sell also as an as a installation component is going to be RGB grills to go on top of them. Mm -hmm. So um, the thing I like to brag about about the KMC subwoofer, or excuse me, the KM line of subwoofers is they actually have a coating over them to help that RGB light of the grill reflect off of it. So it actually helps the speaker pop. So you're not just getting um, you know a great looking grill that it kind of reflects off of the speaker. It reflects on purpose because we actually covered it with a coating to actually scatter that light and it popped pretty good. Something else cool that uh, we actually didn't put in our script to talk about, Ken and I were working with our Italian marine distributor just recently and the question came up, are these ISO, is it 2691? I forget the ISO number exactly. Yeah, you got me on camera now. I've forgotten it as well. <laughs> but the question was, are these 
ISO rated, which means will they prevent water from entering the boat under extreme conditions? Right. And the answer is yes. Of course they will. Of course they will. So once you've actually mounted them um, to that plane, it's usually a fiberglass side of the storage compartment or whatever. Again, if you spray with a hose, etc., it does not allow water to intrude into the storage compartment or whatever you might have installed it in. Yeah. There's only two manufacturers in the world that are currently ISO certified. So that's a, that's a big deal if you're Kicker's looking to build a boat. That's right. And again, that's why a lot of those OEM manufacturers choose to use Kicker products in that boat because we're, we're the gold standard. So a common question we get in trainings too that I want to bring up for the audience, what happens if I bought the free air version of the subwoofer and I throw it in a box, oh look, there's already a box on my boat, so I put it in an enclosed space. What happens with that woofer? So the free air woofer, um, it is going to look identically. The difference is the suspension is set up to be in a free air environment. Um, so you have a stiffer suspension on the KMF 10 and 12, the free air version of it. So if you were to stick that in a box, you're going to get some terrible efficiency. And <laughs> instead, I'd probably you're going to handle a lot more power. So crank up the power. So you could get by, and then and then uh, you could probably go over the rated power because you got that sealed box, that air spring of the sealed box, helping support the woofer when it thinks there's not supposed to be anything there. So that's the difference between the two the, the two models. What makes one a free air version versus one that's supposed to actually be in a sealed box? And if you're not sure. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Not sure. <laughs> when I read books to my daughter, I use my high voice for the princesses and my low voice for the princes. That's where that comes from. Uh, okay. So if you're not sure if you need free air or the enclosed, the, the box woofer, please contact us here at Kicker, and we'll walk you through yep. a series of questions to figure it out. Because if you choose the wrong one, you're not going to be happy with the performance, and that looks bad on us. So please call us and ask us. Right. And then, of course, the opposite is true. If you were to use the boxed version, the sealed box version, the regular K, 10 or 12 in a free air environment, you're going to end up usually wrecking it because yeah. it's just rated power. Because yeah. again, the suspension is softer because it thinks there's an air spring there, but you don't have that air spring helping it out. So um, buy the correct woofer for that correct installation. And as you said, if you don't know, we got a, a killer customer service team that can help you figure that out. I just realized, Ken, we are way running short on time. We've got a lot oh, more goodness. to talk about. All right, so let's let's talk forward, amps. Then, huh? <laughs> yeah, let's get into amps. Well, Yep, uh, yeah, all right, so we do want to talk, because so we have the KM10 and 12. Uh, I did want to mention we already had the TB speakers. We do have the L7S. So oh. A lot of people, you've got to have that square subwoofer, right? Kicker's yeah. known for square subwoofers. The L7S will work great in a marine environment. So it does have the polypropylene cone, a Santa Prince surround, and uh, you know all of those things that you need to be able to mount that into the side of a subwoofer. Ah, there's a custom install right there. Man, that's insane. It's install, gorgeous. Right? Yeah, so using the L7S <laughs> subwoofer. So if you want a high power handling uh, subwoofer for your boat, choose the L7S. Um, and then I think that's about it. We do have some RGB rings, and I know Ernie went through a lot of trouble to have that. So <laughs> if you don't have an RGB grill, or maybe you're using somebody else's subwoofers or whatever, we do have a whole line of, uh, they look like spacer rings, essentially, but they have RGB lighting in them, and they are dead sexy. <laughs> so as you can see, you can mount the ring behind the speaker itself, and then of course you could have RGB grill on top of it to really wow them. So if you're using somebody else's speakers, or maybe some speakers that are not um, RGB lit, we have some RGB spacer rings and they're about uh, just over half inch they're like 0.6 inch thick um, and they're going to come in uh, the six and a half inch and eight inch diameter those will come in pairs and then we have a 10 inch and 12 inch that are sold separately generally obviously for subwoofer use all right sorry so go ahead and push <laughs> okay. forward. amplifiers you're amplifiers doing, we're trying not great. to skip much but we're blazing through it again we have so many products we do to get everything in right <laughs> so we've talked about our head units we've talked about speakers you need something to power it right so we're going to be looking at our two lines of amplifiers we have the kxma line as well as the kma line and um, so a, a lot of you guys are probably already looking. You're like, well, that looks like KX at car amplifiers. <laughs> this looks like CX car amplifiers. So don't let it fool you. Obviously, the chassis may look similar, but that's kind of where the similarities stop in that regard. So um, first and foremost, all of these are going to be AB, ABYC compliant. Um, so the circuit board inside, so the, all the electronics inside are covered in a conformal coating. And that's to keep moisture away from the electronics itself. So we all know you guys are going to mount these in um, you know, a great location that water never gets, right? <laughs> well, we do have a theory that stuff happens. 
So maybe through wet life jackets. So you can see in that picture there, the conformal coating. It's kind of like an epoxy coating that goes all over the circuit board of the amplifier. So if you throw those wet life jackets in there or you forgot the, uh, the cover to one of your storage compartments, maybe a, a, your son or daughter got in there and didn't seal it back up, started raining or whatever it might be. So if the amp gets wet, hopefully the electronics stay dry. Additionally, we do have uh, marine compliant terminals in them. So you can see it actually has kind of a compression fitting in the terminals. I don't know if we have time to showcase all of that stuff or what. You guys are scaring me with your you, time. You talk and I'll just show he'll, it off. He'll Vanna White me. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you can see actually inside that terminal, like the uh, four gauge inputs, for example, you can see that the set screw that uh, tightens on the four gauge power and ground doesn't actually, that set screw doesn't come down and pierce those copper strands of wire. There's an actual intermediate, if you can tilt it up a little bit for there, there's actually an intermediate tab inside that terminal connection that actually squishes down on the wires. Um, you know, it's somewhat similar to like a wire ferrule built into the amplifier itself. And again, that's because we're compliant with NM, NMMA and ABYC on uh, those car, Coast Guard regulations as well. So the KX MA line of amplifiers, we've got two four channel options for 2020. We have a 500.4 and an 800.4. We have a 402. We have that big 1200.2 that we talked about yeah. for those marine cans, 1200 watts RMS. Uh, in a full range setup. And then we have a 905, so that's gonna be your five channel. And then the 808 that Aaron alluded to Ooh. earlier. So that is an eight channel amplifier with all the crossover controls in the world. <laughs> so if you wanna, if you wanna do bandpass, look at the end panel on that amplifier. Oh, excuse me, new for 2021. All right. <laughs> we introduced them at SEMA 2020. Yes, we did. So we introduced them, we unveiled them in 2020. So they are new for 2021. Um, but look at that end panel on there. Look at all those knobs and dials and switches <laughs> and whatnot. So obviously you have separate gain control for every pair of channels. That's great. So you, like you said, if you don't want some speakers up at the front where the, uh, the old people are, <laughs> you can turn that down and you can certainly do that. Um, if you want bandpass crossovers because you want to make a true mid-range speaker, um, you know, you want to have a true mid-bass speaker, whatever it might be, you can do that. You have all, all kinds of control with it. Um, you have a time send multiplier on it. You can do biamping. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with the KXMA. So much, much better crossover control with the KXMA line of amplifiers. Um, but I don't want to sell our, our uh, budget constrained guys short either. So this is going to be the KMA line of amplifiers. Now you're still going to get that same conformally coated PCB. You still get all those uh, marine compliant terminals, et cetera, et cetera. This is more of our uh, you know entry level marine amplifier. But when Kicker, Kicker does entry level, it's the real deal. So on the KMA line of amplifiers, we do have two four channel options as well, a 360.4 and a 600.4 as well as a 150.2, a 600.6, so there is a six channel in the KMA lineup, and then an 800.1. So um, whether it's the KXMA or the KMA line of amplifiers, you're gonna get everything that's built for the marine environment. In terms of compliance or safety, you're not shortchanging anything like that, um, but you do not get the crossover control, and uh, obviously the, the like the 1202 and the 800, you get some more power obviously with the KXMA line of amplifiers. So before it happens, we wanna make sure that we remind you guys that contest is about to close. It closes at 8.30 uh, central, so here in about three or four minutes, that uh, contest link will close. So if you just tuned in, we are gonna do a giveaway at the end of this video, so make sure you log on to Aaron, hit him up with the details. So we've got three prizes, EB300s, which is our earbuds, Kicker earbuds, for a base for your head. You get a gray Kicker on Mass t-shirt and a pair of koozies for Give the, the adult link. beverages. Only got a few minutes. Oh, the, the link. link. Oh, sorry. The link. It's the link is scrolling at the oh, bottom. Sweet, sweet. But uh, in case you can't read the link, it is kicker.fun forward slash marine. M-A-R-I-N-E. Kicker.fun forward slash marine. You've got another two and a half minutes to enter. We're going to close it down at 8.30, and then we're going to announce the prize winners roughly in 30 minutes or so. So stay tuned. You must be present to win. And the first, con the first prize is a set of LED coax six and a half or eight inch marine speakers, the ones we talked about tonight. And you get to choose whatever size works better for you. And can you put them in a car? Yes, you can put them in your car. Light up the LEDs, get a little mood lighting in there. And you also get the limited edition Kicker Unmasked black t-shirt. So you get a little step up from the standard t-shirt, which is right there. The Unmasked Classic. Yeah. 
Cyrus, I wanted to answer your question. The power and ground cable is absolutely available in spools, so you do not have to buy a full wiring kit if you want to uh, purchase the 8-gauge, 4-gauge, 0-gauge marine wire in spools, absolutely. So on the note of wire, let's talk marine accessories. So these are going to be new, new as well. Uh, we do have a whole new line of marine compliant accessories. Um, that's going to be, we'll start obviously with our wiring kits. So full wiring kits, if you want to Vanna White yep, those, we I can do. certainly do that. Wait, Vanna White, who's Vanna White, that's old you. guy? Huh? Who is Vanna White? The, the Wheel of Fortune lady. Yeah, yeah. Okay, old guy. Call me I don't old. know what old Wheel of Fortune <laughs> is. All right. <laughs> anyway, so in each of our wiring kits, you're going to get 20 foot of red power wire and then 20 foot of yellow ground wire. And you may be thinking, Ken, why the heck do you include, need 20 foot of ground wire? And what's up with those goofy colors? <laughs> so again, those are ABYC compliant colors. So we complied with their, co their color scheme, and we've done that. Um, why, why do you think that there's a universal color scheme there? Well, I'm going to say that if I've got an electrical issue in my boat and I need to cut a wire real fast, I want to know which one to cut. Exactly. So let's say that's not your boat or you know, whatever <laughs> it might be. Yeah, you know by looking at that wire color what the purpose of that wire is. So if you need to disconnect that electrical load quickly, you could look for the red wire or whatever it might be and know that that's actually the power wire. So that's why we've chosen those colors. That's why they do that in general. Um, but you're going to get 20 foot of power wire, 20 foot of ground wire included with that because we know you can't ground the chassis on a boat, right? Just like you can in a car, you can ground in the trunk or wherever it might be. You've got to run all the way back to that negative battery post if you're doing it in a boat. So if your amplifier is mounted up to 20 foot away from your battery, that wiring kit's got you, color, got you covered. And we have the wiring kits in a uh, PK4 and the PK8. So four gauge and eight gauge in the wiring kits. If you do need zero, it is sold on the spool. Um, actually, we've got a piece of that here. Yeah. It can yeah. throw that snake around your neck. So um, oh. one of the things I do want to stress, we've already talked about how Kicker's Marine Gear is the real deal, right? Well, especially with our wiring. So all of our wiring is going to be a, a uh, first full American wire gauge spec, and then it's going to be obviously high strand count, you know, flexible like Aaron's showcase in there, and then it's also uh, full OFC. So Kicker does not do copper clad aluminum. Nothing under this roof, this goofball. <laughs> Nothing under this roof uh, is going to be copper clad aluminum, whether it's the marine stuff or car audio stuff. So in the marine environment, we use all OFC, and uh, it is true spec. So if you want to, if you're, you're actually getting four gauge instead of uh, you know four gauge exterior, and then when you cut the insulation back, it's more like eight gauge inside. So you don't play that game here at Kicker. Um, so you're going to get the real deal. Um, in addition to the power wire, you're also going to get our brand new fuse holder. And this is going to be the MRBF fuse holder, the um, yeah. acronym on KMF MF fuse holder. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of acronyms there. But that is our Kicker uh, marine fuse holder is going to be included with that wiring kit or it is sold piecemeal. So if you do, do need to just buy that battery terminal separately, uh, we do offer that. Now the cool thing about this specific battery terminal is designed to mount directly onto the top of the battery. Ernie, I think we got some installed shots of that too. So you can see that eye hole there actually threads onto the top of the battery. And then the Marine Busman fuse, MRBF fuse, that's a standard in the marine environment. It is the gold standard fuse would then go on top. And then you can see a ring terminal to your main power wire would then would hop on top of that. So those fuses there, the thing that makes that special is that it's completely sealed from the external environment. So that fusible link that's inside there, if it were to pop, if you were to obviously have a problem in your boat and the fuse were to pop and it were near some um, you know, flammable gases, again, we talked about that at the beginning of the stream, it's not going to ignite those gases and have a fire on your hands. So again, that is um, the fuse themselves we didn't design. That's, that is the gold standard in the marine environment, the MRBF fuse by Marine Busman. We'll plug right on top of that uh, battery terminal that we have, put your ring terminal on top of that, and then uh, run out to your amplifiers. Maybe you got more than one amplifier, though, Aaron. Oh. Ah, OK. So that's going to be our new marine distribution block. And as he's showing you there, uh, it is color coded. So that red ring on the top of it is going to be for power. We do have a yellow ring, one for ground. And yes, the fuse blocks are actually different. Um, so in the one with the short stud on it, that's where the input would come from the battery. Of course, that is fused directly on the battery. We just showed you the fuse holder for that. So you would run your zero gauge or four gauge in there. And then those same MRBF fuses could then be inserted on top of those other three studs. So maybe you've got a, a 60 amp fuse that runs to your four channel amplifier. And then next to it, you have a 100 amp fuse that's for your subwoofer amplifier. And you could run you know, out to, to those separate amplifiers from there. Um, and then the cover goes on top of it. And if you can look on that cover, you can actually see that there's these little kind of windows that you would snap off if you needed to use them. And they are on each end as well. So if you needed to have the wire come in from the end, your zero gauge or your four gauge come in from the end, 
because of your particular installation, you have that option. Snap the little window off and uh, you're, away you go. Um, fuse sizes, fuse um, amperage ratings are available all the way from 40 amp to 300 amplified, uh, 300 amperes. So 300 amps uh, in that MRBF fuse design. So whatever you got, you know, if you want to run double lot gauge or green <laughs> wire or whatever it needs to be, 300 amps all the way down to 40 amps. So we have those available for us. Ken is uh, working on a, a boat install mm. for uh, a video we're going to be shooting here. And the very first conversation we had was how much amperage do we need? How much battery do we need? Right. How much uh, charging system do we need to power this monstrous audio system? Right. And so we're going to be using a whole bunch of these products in that install. We do. So, I mean, he's hinting at a video that we're shooting and a boat install we have coming up that will walk through some of these products in detail. So it'll be a while out, but, um, you know, that's coming soon. Uh, but yeah, electrical systems obviously very, very important in a boat. So on a boat, generally more than a car, you have people that play with the boat not running. So if you're pulled up yeah. on the sandbar or whatever <laughs> it might be, we have folks that use a bank of auxiliary batteries and we needed to obviously measure, well, how long are you going to be playing? How much power are we putting in and how much play time will you get? You probably need more than one battery to power it for 20 minutes. You know? yeah. So maybe he wants to listen for three hours. Maybe we need four auxiliary batteries. And so all that will come in and we'll wire that in using those distribution blocks with the MRBF uh, ignition protected fuses. Bill, we got any questions the audience wants us to yeah, we cover? Answer some questions. I know we're... We're doing well on time again, so okay, good, uh, good. so can't take a breath. Some, <laughs> take a breath. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, you, good, we're you, good. You talked a lot. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, the contest is closed. Uh, closed five minutes ago. So Bill is working behind the scenes to figure out who are the winners. Yeah, he's got everybody's name in the bingo ball and he's rolling it out and taking them out. <laughs> bingo. Yeah, bingo ball <laughs> bingo. holder. I don't know. <laughs> So we've got no questions up there. You know, actually, Ken, uh, something we talked about in one of our uh, training videos is what about using these in an automotive application? Yeah, of course. If you have um, you know, a top mount battery that actually doesn't have a post, if it's a set screw design, as you saw in that installed picture, um, then by all means. So that, there you can see exactly how it connects. So the eye hole that you're seeing on the left, um, your threaded, uh, your set screw would then go through there, whether it's uh, you know Allen or whatever it might be. And then you can see how the power would come up that steel. It has that isolation there, that black bumper that you're seeing is what isolates the electricity from the bottom part to the post on the top. And then the fuse is what bridges that gap. So you can see how all the electricity would then pass through that MRBF fuse. Coast Guard specifies that the fuse must be within six inches of the, uh, the po positive power on the battery post. And this, of course, achieves that by being on top an of inch. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, an maybe, inch maybe or so. Inch, <laughs> and, and so uh, we, we've got it covered there. And of course, in an automotive environment, that works well too, for simplicity's sake. And you know, another benefit we talked about with the, the really long power and ground in a power kit is some vehicles where you don't have a solid ground at the back of the vehicle. Yeah, exactly. So um, you know, we've, we've said over and over again that the marine products can be used in the car audio environment especially the eight channel amplifier actually so if you're doing a, maybe a high-end you know Mercedes or whatever and you need multi-channel amplification KX MA 800.8 we see that used in the car audio environment a lot but to get back to your um, your marine power kits maybe you have an aluminum body vehicle so it generally sometimes you have some installers that they like running the ground all the way back to the battery even in the pickup truck with an aluminum body the marine wiring kit would be perfect for that. So now you get 20 foot of ground to come all the way back up to the battery. So there are some applications outside of the marine environment where you could be using these wiring kits. Good time to ask this question. So if we've got a kicker car audio power ground kit, could we use that in a marine install? So actually all of Kicker's wiring is marine compliant other than the colors. So, um, you know, it's, the jacket is still rated up to the right temperature. It's still a uh, full gauge, full true spec, the car audio wiring kits, as well as being OFC. Um, but of course it comes with a very short ground. So, you know, um, performance wise, it would probably work pretty well, but if you want to follow the compliance, um, you know, with the colors, et cetera, then make sure you buy the marine wiring kit. This reminds me, we didn't talk yet about the RCA cables. Something sure. special about that. Yeah, yeah, so you guys, we, we do have a whole lineup of stuff, so you can see we have the MRBF fuse, the separate uh, battery terminal that you would also get in the wiring kits, but it is sold separately. The distribution block, this is actually the ground one. The only difference is the fuses don't go in here, right? So it's gonna be four studs, and then you can link up your ring terminals for the ground. Um, so it's more different than just the color. Uh, there is actually a performance difference in that. And then you have uh, marine RCA cables, so a whole lineup of marine RCA cables. And you can note, I don't know if, if Tim, you can get in real tight on the I'll end there. I'll get you. 
Um, so you may be thinking, Ken, you just pull on my leg. How come you got marine grade <laughs> RCA cables? What makes those different than the uh, than the car audio RCA cables? And if you look at the tips of those, you can see that they're over, the over molding goes all the way up to the end of the barrel. So once you insert those RCA cables into your amplifier, you don't have to worry about water splashing on the uh, you know the barrel or the negative part of the RCA. So that over molding again goes all the way up and then would touch the end panel of the amplifier. So what? that's the difference of between the marine and the uh, car audio version. What happens to the warranty of a kicker amp when you use a kicker power kit? Extra year. Extra year. So that's a great reason. If you're already going to buy a kicker amplifier, you want great wire, of course, to make sure you get great performance. Um, so anytime you have a kicker wiring or a kicker wiring kit and an amplifier together, you get an extra year warranty on our amplifiers. And of course, we do that because we know we make great wire, and wire is a critical part of performance of the amplifier. So we're absolutely willing to extend the warranty an extra year because we know you're going to have no problems because you got great wire power in it. We've got a full service department here at Kicker, and so we service all of our amplifiers, uh, warranty, in warranty, or out of warranty. And one of the things that the warranty guys will do is if they have an amplifier that comes in for service and the consumer claims that it's defective, it doesn't work, whatever, we'll put it on a test bench, hook it up, and make sure that it's broken. And in a lot of cases, it's not. In fact, it's about seven out of ten cases. Yeah, that's the amplifiers. Of times. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the amplifier. User errors is <laughs> yeah. the uh, most common problem. Uh, and, and so the the technician will actually contact the customer and say, hey, uh, here's a couple of general things I want you to check before I send the amp back to you right. because I want to make sure that when you get the amp back, it works as you expect it to. And one of the number one things they say is check your power, check your ground. Is it proper gauge? Right. Is is it corroded? Because yep. if it's not tinned wire, it can corrode and it All just deteriorates. All it takes deteriorates. is one loose connection to drop voltage or whatever it might be and you start having issues. Um, right. So. Um, make sure you're using full OFC or oxygen-free copper wire and not the copper-clad aluminum. Um, and then, of course, the proper gauge. So make sure it's true spec. So, well, I got the four gauge in there. Well, not every, <laughs> not every manufacturer's four gauge is built the same. So if you're using kicker wire, you have nothing to worry about. And that's, that's why we have that offer. Kicker wire, kicker amp, extra year warranty on the amplifier, whether it's the marine amplifiers, the car audio amplifiers, whatever it might be. That's just been standard through kicker. What else we got to cover here? Uh, one last thing I did, did want to call out. Some people are probably looking at whatever these guys are. You can probably see those are ring terminals. Let's see if I can kind of turn them towards the camera. I can see it. Uh, we do have ring terminals with the heat shrink on it. So if you do need to custom make some uh, battery cables, or obviously we have ring terminals on top of our MRBF fuses you're going to need. Uh, we do have ring terminals that are built all the way up to zero gauge with heat shrink that would then, uh, you know, you could shrink around it. So that is available as well. All we right. talked about the RGB Let's, wire, six conductor wire. That was on did. the list. We did. We jumped ahead, yeah. Yeah. What's left, Aaron? I, I'm sure somebody's got some. Yeah. What have got? Our, is the RCA cable good for the ocean water? It's very corrosive. Again, built for the marine environment. Built for the marine environment every, every which way possible. So um, make sure you're using the marine version of it. But yes, absolutely. Whether you have uh, salt water or fresh water, use the marine RCA. You'll be good to go. Yeah, and actually the marine RCAs uh, have additional uh, strain relief built in as well because we know your boat is doing this for hours on end and that can, uh, over time, that just break that wire off. So we have extra strain relief built into those cables, which you can probably see if Tim were to get a close enough shot, you might be able to see that in there. Purpose designed and purpose built for the marine environment. So, Bill, more questions or should we give stuff away? Is it? Can we give stuff away now? We can? Okay. Oh, wait. Kip, so if you sink your boat. <laughs> there you go, exactly. Well, I'll let Kip answer that for himself. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, let's give some stuff away. So, Bill, let's start with uh, third place winner. Who do we have? Uh, drawing that... third place winner. What are they going to win, Aaron? Wait, it's Sean M. in Merrillsville, Washington. Yes. Sean. M. Marysville. Congratulations. What do you win? He wins a set of EB300s. That's some base for your head. And you get a, one of our Kicker Unmasked uh, t-shirts, this guy right here, and then a couple of koozies for a frosty beverage. We are talking so, marine, so that's generally where koozies are used, right? <laughs> Congrats. Well, I use them out of my house, but you know, that's okay. <laughs> so congratulations. And Sean, wait a minute, Sean, I think I know who that Sean is. I'm not going to say his name, but I think that's where he lives. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, you know what I'm talking about. I do know Hey, you're good about. job, Sean. Sean. Cool. Sean is an expert, by the way. So what do we got for second, second place? Second place. Who's the second place oh, winner? Sean, we need there your T-shirt size. 
Sean, uh, I think you're probably an extra large. Winner number two, Ryan P. in Sherman, Texas. Ryan P. Sherman, Texas, you are winner number two. You also get EB300s. You get a unmasked t-shirt, that one right there, and a pair of koozies for your frosty beverage. So make sure you give us your t-shirt size. I don't know Also, you. we're gonna need you to email your name, full name, address, it cannot be a PO box, your telephone number to social at kicker.com. So please email social at kicker.com with those details. Name, phone number, no P.O. box, <laughs> and no P.O. box address, no, yep. and uh, a t-shirt size. So that's winner number two. Yep. Okay, Bill, grand, uh, prize. grand prize. Can we do a drum roll? Yeah, there we go. What's the first place winner is? Number one, is... who is it? Final winner, Jason Z, Maple Valley, Washington. Jason Z, you get a six and a half or eight inch marine coax LED speaker and you get a limited edition version of that, which is the black and white, the original. And then of course- The OG version. The, the OG. Hey, what is OG for us young guys? That's uh, the, the one that's been around a long time. Okay, okay, the, the one that's been around a long time. The original get, gangster. That's <laughs> I saw that on a license plate once and I said, what is that? So uh, we need your, as Ken said, we need your t-shirt size, your name address, and your phone number. Social at kicker.com. Social at kicker.com. Send us your info so we can get in touch with you and send you your free stuff. I did see one question somebody asking about the MRBF fuse holder, and they asked, why did the thread stop a quarter inch from the bottom? That's so the fuse can go on. So if you notice the close up of the fuse, here I'll hold it real tight. So yes, the threads do stop a quarter inch from the bottom, but that's not where your ring terminal goes. So power comes in on this bottom plate, and then of course you need the fuse on top. And now you can see the threads go all the way down and would hold down your ring terminal on top of that. Um, so there is no threads all the way to the bottom because it's, it's not necessary. The nut never needs to go down that far. So that's, that's the answer to that question. Good question. That's, boy, that's a Salt very question, specific yeah. question. Nice, nice. Bill, any other questions we should be talking about? That's it for the questions? Bill's saying that's it. All right. What well, else you guys want to talk about it. We still got a few minutes, right? Was it eight forty-five? Yeah, I, I'm new to and this. We so started five minutes late. Do we, do we just hang up or do we go home and just right. wrap it up? Okay, cameraman says wrap it up. He's Ladies, he wants, gentlemen, <laughs> he wants second dinner. <laughs> Same time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. And uh, Kip will be back next week, so the star of the show will be here next week. That's right. Hopefully, we did him justice. Hopefully, he's uh he's not like oh that dang uh, Ernie Ken. Ken. Yeah, hopefully, we we held it down and. Uh, like I said, tune in every Tuesday, same time, 7.30 Central, here at Kicker on Mass Live, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Thanks for being here. Good night. High five, dude. Nicely done. Good.